relatives of the victims of the Grenfell Tower fire have called for fire chiefs to be sacked and face prosecution after the official report found systemic failures made by the London Fire Brigade. 72 people lost their lives as a result of the fire, but firefighters say they are being blamed unfairly. Well, we're joined now by Matt Rack, General Secretary of the Fire Brigade's Union, and former firefighter Steve Dudney, who was involved in coordinating fire crews in the morning after the fire broke out. The fire broke out just before uh, one o'clock in the morning, yeah. didn't it, that night? I mean, as we know, accelerated just horrifically quickly beyond imagination, and then you were called on shift around 8 o'clock yeah. in the morning. When you arrived, what did you have to do? What did you see? What did you experience? So, I, I think, at the time, I'd done 30 years, and I'd, I'd always been... Um, Worked in East London, or not, lots of high-rise fires, used to see lots of disasters over the years. But what I couldn't believe was six hours, seven hours into the fire, as I looked at the building, there were still individual flats catching fire. And obviously what, what's come up now is that they were burning from the inside out because of the failure of the compartmentation. Fire had spread throughout the building, not only externally, but internally as well. We, we as the fire service, were left with uh, an impossible task. Um, absolutely mm. Im impossible to deal with yeah uh, Matt let's th let's talk about this this um, report because it's there's a lot of focus and criticism on the stay put strategy that was in place on the night um, lots of questions surrounding whether somebody had made a decision sooner whether maybe more of those victims could have got out you've already said that you think it's been under undermined in the eyes of the public this stay put strategy mm -hmm. um nothing seems to have changed i think that's the shock for everybody is that after the years that we've been waiting nothing's changed with that strategy why is that i think that is uh, shocking and uh, i think the first point we want to make is this really needs to be a turning point at, at the and a, a time for major change in lots of areas of policy of, in housing and, and and for the fire and rescue service as well the grenfell um uh, or United Group um, say that some relatives want senior staff in the fire service to be prosecuted. Steve, you know, you there on the night, all of your colleagues, everyone pays tribute to the lengths that you went to to get people out. But if you're a relative of somebody who died mm. in that fire that night and you see that there is criticism of the fire brigade, lack of training, lack of communication, not overturning the stay put policy. You can understand, can't you, Matt, that you would want people to be held accountable for that. So who is or who are those people? And I, I think uh, I would want to say this has been a difficult week for lots of people. It's been a difficult week for firefighters, but above all, this is, must be a truly terrible week for those people who lost members of their mm -hmm. family. And anyone who's followed this, and I've followed it very closely, I attended the incident, uh, not as a firefighter, but attending the incident the same day Steve did. Uh, anyone who's watched that closely and heard the testimony of uh, the bereaved, uh, it's heartbreaking to hear. Likewise, I've listened to the testimony of firefighters and uh, it's hard to hold back tears, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we do need to, to very much remember that community. Mm -hmm. And I fully understand their calls and they need to be listened. We've been very clear that they have the right to ask questions, they have the right to ask difficult questions, and the fire service has to address those, those points. I think for us, the, the report uh, very clearly says these are systemic failures. These are problems in the systems within the fire service and in policy making, uh, that some, many of which we've pointed to for, for many years. But should uh, individuals be held accountable? Well, if, they, if they're... I'm not a lawyer. If, they, if there are, in relation to prosecutions, I suspect many of us are surprised somebody hasn't been prosecuted about that tower already, mm -hmm. 28 months on. And you mean in terms of the construction and in the terms, In terms of the cr construction, refurbishment and contracts and so on. I, but I'm not an expert in that field. Yeah. And, any, you know, I'm sure we know that the police are investigating mm -hmm. and if there are people who have breached the law, then no doubt they will be... Uh, facing the consequences mm. of that. Steve, it's uh, two years on. Uh, you handled logistics when you got down there. As you say, you've been through all sorts of uh, different experiences as a firefighter, but this is one that, that, that struck you on the night. Yeah. How are you and your fellow firefighters still dealing with the fallout from this? Because I'd imagine that the criticism that can come about and the, and, and the frustration and anger from those families must hit really hard for yeah, you. Yeah, I think it's been a very bleak week for my colleagues. You know, not so much for me because I didn't do a lot, but... All of my former colleagues, uh, those who are at the fire, 
are just wrecked with 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 guilt. You know, the, uh, uh, on the morning, part of my job was to say, "Come on, look, you've done enough. We've got to bring some fresh crews in," and that's going to live with them forever. You know, they're really suffering. They suffered on the day, they've suffered since, and. Um, from a personal point of view, every time I hear or read about Grenfell Tower, it really brings me down like nothing before. And just driving past this morning, because I came down the A40, you know, it's the first time I've seen the block in a couple of years, and just looking at it, it you, I just didn't want to look at it, but force yourself to look at it. So I can only imagine that, that my colleagues, those who were there on the night, who faced those decisions, you know, the people who had to make the impossible decisions, and the poor firefighters who were sent in in some cases, uh, some of my firefighters who, who worked for me at the time in my area of London, they, they've said to me quite candidly, we thought we were going to die, but it, it's our job.